Every year in February and October, people of African descent celebrate Black History Month where they remember important personalities and events in the history of the African diaspora. In the United States of America, where Black History Month originated, it is also known as African American History Month. Black History Month has also received official recognition from governments in Canada, where it is celebrated every February, and in Ireland, the Netherlands, and the United Kingdom, where it is celebrated every October. So, how did Black History Month come to be, and why was February chosen for it? What is the relevance of Black History Month to people of African descent around the globe? All of these questions shall be answered in this episode. Black History Month has become one of the most celebrated cultural heritage months of the year. Schools and businesses offer Black History-themed meals, lectures, plays and quizzes while major brands roll out clothing, television specials, and content for consumers. It all started in 1915 when Carter Godwin Woodson, who is now known as the father of black history, and minister Jesse Edward Morland, founded the Association for the Study of Negro Life and History, now known as the Association for the Study of African American Life and History. This group focused on researching the advancement made by people of African descent, and in 1926, they sponsored the first Negro History Week, which is now known as Black History Month. Woodson, whose parents were enslaved, was an author, historian, and the second African American to earn a PhD at Harvard University in 1912 after W.E.B. Du Bois. It is important to note that the Negro History Week was not conceived in a vacuum. The 1920s saw the rise in interest in African-American culture that was represented by the Harlem Renaissance, an intellectual and cultural revival of African-American music, dance, art, fashion, literature, theater, and politics centered in Harlem, Manhattan, New York City, which extended into the 1930s. It was also known as New Negro Movement. Through Negro History Week, Woodson hoped to draw on this imagination and pique interest even further. He had two objectives. One was to use history to remind white America that black people had played major roles in the founding of the nation, and as a result, needed to be treated fairly as citizens. His other aim was to raise the consciousness of black life and history at a time when few newspapers, books or universities paid attention to the black community but concentrated on the negative. By honoring heroic black people, Woodson wanted to illustrate African-American values with the expectation that the Negro History Week will act as a vehicle for radical change permanently. In February 1969, Black History Month was first proposed by black educators and the black United students at Kent State University. The next year, the first celebration of Black History Month took place from January 2nd to February 28, 1970. By 1976, the event was being celebrated all across the United States in educational institutions, centers for black culture, and community centers. That same year, President Gerald Ford recognized and officially designated February as Black History Month in the United States during the celebration of the nation's bicentennial. Since then, every U.S. president has recognized Black History Month and its mission. But it wasn't until 1986 when Congress passed National Black History Month into law that many citizens in the United States started to recognize it officially. 
The aim of the law was to make all Americans conscious of the fight for freedom and equality. This decision met with an enthralling response by the black community prompted the creation of black history clubs and an increase in interest among teachers. But why did the Fathers of Black History Month choose February? Woodson chose February for the Negro History Week because it coincided with the birth dates of both President Abraham Lincoln, who was born on February 12, and the famed abolitionist Frederick Douglass, who was born on February 14. Both men played a significant role in helping to end slavery. Also, February 1 is National Freedom Day in the United States, the anniversary of the approval of the 13th Amendment which abolished slavery in 1865. President Abraham Lincoln had signed the 13th Amendment to the United States Constitution on February 1, 1865, freeing all slaves in the United States, although it would take until later before the states ratified it. Major Richard Robert Wright Sr., who was enslaved and became a civil rights advocate and author, felt that all Americans should have a day to remember their freedom. Wright invited national and local leaders to meet in Philadelphia to devise arrangements to set aside February 1st each year to celebrate the signing of the 13th Amendment to the United States Constitution. After Wright's death in 1947, the United States Congress passed a bill declaring February 1st National Freedom Day. President Harry Truman then signed the holiday declaration into law on June 30, 1948. In Canada, black history has not always been celebrated or highlighted. There is little mention that some of the loyalists who came to Canada after the American Revolution and settled in the Maritimes were people of African descent or of the many sacrifices made in wartime by soldiers of African descent as far back as the War of 1812. A motion by politician Jean Augustine of Canada's House of Commons in December 1995 officially recognized February as Black History Month and honored Black Canadians. In February 2008, Senator Donald Oliver, the first Black man appointed to the Senate, introduced a motion to recognize contributions of Black Canadians and February as Black History Month. It received unanimous approval and was adopted on March 4, 2008. The adoption of this notion completed Canada's parliamentary position on Black History Month. When Black History Month first started in the United Kingdom, there was a big focus on Black American history. Over time, there has been more attention on Black British history and key Black figures from the UK. A broad range of topics is covered from Britain's colonial past to migration and music. Black History Month in the UK was first celebrated in London on October 1st 1987, as part of the African Jubilee Year. The event marks the contributions of Black people throughout history and the contributions of African, Asian and Caribbean people to the economic, cultural and political life in the UK. Over the years, there have been growing calls from campaigners for Black history to be included in the curriculum in England and not just celebrated in October.
Since Black History Month or African American History Month is an annual celebration of achievements made by Black Americans and the central roles of African Americans in the U.S. history, it is safe to say that many Africans have not really found it upon themselves to celebrate it. As a matter of fact, the indifference of African immigrants to Black History Month is related to the fact that it tends to ignore African history in favor of an emphasis of African American history, especially in recent years. Thus, these Africans don't see themselves represented in this history. Except for South Africa, which suffered white domination and supremacy until 1994, coupled with the suppression of South African history by the colonialist, African countries are really not keen on celebrating the event. However, the relevance of Black History Month cannot be underestimated. In 1870, the black population of the United States was 4.8 million people. In 2018, the number has risen to 43.8 million African Americans. In conclusion, Black History Month would allow and encourage people to learn about and celebrate the contributions of the African diaspora throughout the world. The event will also educate, entertain, and inform the public about Black history. To Woodson, what started as Negro History Week 97 years ago is now a global annual event that is essential for young African Americans to understand and be proud of their heritage. To be proud and black. <laughs> <laughs>